Bang! Welcome, Bike. Week 18, we're not here to talk fantasy. We're here to talk jugs. We have how many jugs left? Uh, we're empty. giving away jugs. <laughs> <laughs> empty jugs? Not the jugs you guys are thinking of. Damn. Not the fun jugs. No. Water what do you mean? jugs. Well, we Grow have full ones. We're we talking ones about we playoff ones. situations, playoff scenarios. We're talking about incentives for players that want to make a little bit of money by doing just a little bit more on the field. And we're going to take our favorite prize pick squares. Squares that we dare you to fade. Let's start it off. You like that, huh? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. It would get me to click on the title yeah. and the thumbnail and whatnot. <laughs> I'm gonna let you design. I'm gonna let you design the thumbnail for this one. We'll see if you can. Oh, do this both is gonna, parts. You're, gonna, gonna, you're gonna regret <laughs> that. All right. Uh, I guess playoff scenarios. The key games this week: Jaguars, Titans. That's winning in. Chiefs at Raiders. Seahawks, Rams, Packers, Lions. Um, those are all very important. Animal, you want to tell us why? Yeah, sure. Um, so let's start with. Well, you went over the. Um, Jaguars, Titans, that's a win and in. Very simple scenario. Jaguars, Titans, whoever wins goes to the playoffs. For the South. For the South. That's right. They win the division and they, yes, they go into the playoffs. I mean, the Chiefs are playing for the one seed. Yeah, the, the Chiefs The Bengals are, and Bills essentially tied. So if they win, they'll have the bye plus home field advantage. Raiders are just playing for respect. Yeah, I mean, the Raiders are <laughs> just playing that left. game because they have to be there. Right. Um, Excited about Jared Sidham, though. I'm excited to see this kid sling. He looked great. Looked great. Is it one of those things where, like, it's that... It's just the new guy? Yeah, the new guy comes in. Like, they don't have a lot of tape on him. He just goes out there and shines, and then the next week they shut him down. Niners are kind of drunk off of New Year's. It feels like, uh, I mean, in the Patriots system, it's not really, like, in the last couple of years, not subjected to big numbers and stats and fantasy stuff. So it's it's hard to really, I feel like, get a feel for what a real quarterback is in that system. So we only saw, like, super small glimpses of him. You know, we got to see him sling his thing. So I feel like... I, if I'm a Raiders fan, I'm like weirdly optimistic. Be like, maybe Definitely. this guy's cool, really. You know? I see. Yeah. If I'm a Raiders fan, I'm terrified because now it's like, all right, are we going to draft a quarterback? Are we going to stick with Stidham? Like, is this going to be like, what are we going to do? Have, you have like Russell Wilson trauma right I, now. Yeah. I understand where that's coming from, but I don't. <laughs> like, are we going to be stuck with Stidham now because he looks good, and then we're going to go out there and he's going to suck? <laughs> no, like, I mean the Raiders have like the number. They have like a top five pick at this point, right? Yeah, they're, they'll they're take, take a quarterback, quarterback. if exactly. they want one, and then let them battle it out. If right, if but Stidham earns that, I, I think you're excited because Stidham looks like the much better fit in this offense than Derek Carr. For sure. He, he definitely looked like he actually knew how to, to man that offense versus Derek Carr, who's kind of looked a little lost this year. Right. All right. Uh, the Seahawks game is an interesting one because there's many implications here. They uh, get a win over the Rams, and the Packers lose the Lions there in the playoffs. If the Packers and the Seahawks – hold on. It's so confusing. No, if the Seahawks lose and the Lions beat the Packers, the Lions are in. Right, yes, but if the yes. pa- the Packers are the only one of these three teams that control their destiny, yes, so the they Packers win. win they're they're, in. Somehow they're out of the playoff picture now with the Seahawks above them. But the way the tiebreakers work, yeah, if Packers win, they're in. Lions win, Seahawks lose. The Lions are in. If Seahawks win, and Seahawks need to win and a Packers loss, correct? Yeah, I want to throw something out there. How awesome would this be? Matthew Stafford is technically off of the IR right now. I saw this. What if Matthew Stafford? Comes out stone cold Steve Austin music hits and it's like, my God, Matthew Stafford's limping out of the locker room to fuck up the Seahawks and send the Lions to the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were, I didn't know where that was going. I didn't know if you were like saying he was going to come out of the Lions locker room, play quarterback <laughs> no, no, for them, no, or like, ruin the line, or uh, fucking, yeah. I don't from know. a distance, from way downtown, Matthew Stafford's still helping out the Lions. That would yeah. be his Hall of Fame moment for I me. Saw, I Forget saw that. the Super Bowl. They were talking about that, and they were like, Cooper Cup. They gave like Cooper Cup a special injection. If <laughs> yeah. like, just for this game. Who, okay, out of those three, I've, okay, there's a lot of, uh, like, the Lions and the Seahawks are really fun this year. Like, who do you who do you want to see in there outside of, like, your like the Niners or whoever, you know, anything biased? Like, who do you, would you rather the Seahawks or the Lions? I don't think anyone would want the Packers in there. Yeah, I don't care for the Packers at all. No, definitely not the Packers. I'm going to lean towards the Lions I mean, it as has not, to be the Lions. I think so. I think so. This is a poverty franchise that just like hasn't had a whiff of the playoffs, and I can't even remember Calvin Johnson era. Did they even make the playoffs one time? Maybe. I, don't I, know. I think Geno's the better story though than like the Lions being a shit franchise. But no, it, it Lions just, were just on hard knocks. This is perfect. It's like right. I don't, I don't like that, Goff. I don't like Goff enough to be like I want <laughs> yeah, them a little to be bit. In, you know, you like Geno. 
Way I've more been, than Goff. Way more than Goff. The narrative this year was cool around Gino. I feel like I love I love the, the the narrative around Goff. The guy was basically a, a quarterback that they gave up on. His team left, you know, got rid of him so they can go win a Super Bowl without him. And then he here was he given is. up on. That's fair. Yeah, and now he's taking a team to the playoffs. Not only a team, the Lions, the Detroit Lions, who are famously a bad team. I mean, you could also just insert that in, entire narrative for like Geno Smith too. Yeah, Seahawks yeah, just won yeah. two Super Bowls not too long ago. That's fair, but I just mean like he was left for dead. Then this, I mean, the Seahawks. Have been he wasn't left for dead. He got Gino, punched in the face and Gino broke his jaw. More left for dead. Gino's Whatever. whole. I'd rather have the Lions in. I think I think they're just a yeah, fun it's, story. It's not overall. even close for me. Lions. That's the better story. Okay. Um. Only game with weather concerns is that Ram Seattle rain thunderstorm. Uh. There's some rain probably Arizona San Francisco. We will put the Roto Grinders link in the description of the video so y'all can go check it out for yourselves. They do a great job following along for. That do we want to talk about? Let's let's talk a little bit about Demar Hamlin in terms of fantasy football, like how you would deal with this situation. Because I made I made a TikTok for us talking about it a little bit yesterday, and I just basically said the exact same thing we're doing for E Town and the same thing we're doing for the Bash is like I'd rather do it right than do it quickly for your league. So like I'd rather see what the final final decision for the NFL is when it comes to the Buffalo for the Buffalo Cincinnati game if they end up replaying it afterwards. At this point it feels like I don't know how they can really do that. Yeah. Do you guys have any strong takes on like how you play out a fantasy championship that does depend on that game? I feel like you just leave it as is. Really? It's, it's unfortunate, but that's kind of part of fantasy football. Like the NFL would have to move heaven and earth to get this game in on time. Like they would literally have to I think the easiest way would just to shift back all the AFC playoff games, which isn't easy either because then you have an AFC team going to the Super Bowl with one week rest versus the NFC whatever doesn't matter there's really not a way you can play this and I mean yeah a lot of people probably got shafted because they were you know there's a lot of fantasy players on that Monday night slate that they wanted to play but there's just there's no fair way to go about it other than just calling it because you can go back and be like okay set an optimal lineup you can go back and be like just change the players that you had like for well, what about like but, if I'm down but I got multiple players and sleepers or whatever platforms is like we're cutting it right here I'm pissed like I'm at least making sure that I'm pushing for a co-champion ring there not even like a ring but like I want to split prize if I have a like, chance if I you truly can be believe, the winner but like the money's getting split or something like that I, like, I if I if I'm like sitting there in the championship and I believe that my team could win that like if I'm even close to 50 percent chance I'm not like yo this I, I'm 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 pushing for money to be split. I'm pushing for like a co championship. I don't know. It it seems like Compromise it somewhere. seems like the person who was down got screwed. So then with that, well, yeah. you're just screwing the guy who was a who was ahead. And maybe and like you said, maybe like it was all set up where you only needed ten points from like Josh Allen and Jamar Chase or something. Like you were bound to win. But I don't know. It, it just feels like this is fantasy football. Shit happens. Games get canceled. Kind of. More recently, because of COVID, but feels like, like the worst thing that could have happened in COVID, but it just didn't happen in COVID, and yeah. it just yeah. happened now. It's a little delayed COVID. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you said, there's no real fair way, obviously, and that's just that, that's right. life. Life's not fair. This shit's gonna happen to you throughout life. Uh, you know, shit like this happens. Fantasy football, unfortunately, it happened in this. Uh, this but, happened in my home league, and people were throwing out suggestions, and it's like you guys are just throwing out suggestions based on how you would win it. You know, right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like if you have a normal, actually, I guess a lot of fantasy leagues are not run by normal people. Don't have, but like people are psychos in their fucking leagues. Right. I feel like if you have a level headed commissioner, they could figure out a compromise between the two people. That, yeah. That's actually objectively fair. I feel like most people are splitting pots and then there's like people that are like splitting it three ways. Like they're giving some of it to the charity, DeMar Hamlin's charity, the toy one. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen like uh, for the bash, like we're in a weird spot. That's a very so weird much spot. on the line. There's a it's an actual yeah. This isn't like a home league. This yeah. is a, you know there's a big deal. There's a big prize and, and both of them there. I think understand that like we want to wait for the right decision to happen. <clears throat> I feel like with yeah. Jordan's team, he's still got a lot of players, and I've I've, I've got feel, screenshots of their lineups yeah. and shit. So like you know we know how everything went down. We know where it left off. Um, I think if we got on the phone with both of them, they'd both be okay being like, all right, we your co champions will somehow figure out what they wanted to take if they were going to win and then split it that way. I think that's probably the most likely scenario of what's going to happen. I saw a fun option. Um, fun and probably fair would be the uh, Madden simulator one where people <laughs> I knew take... you were going to bring that up. I love it. I saw it a couple of times. You take the Bills, take the Bengals, put them in a game of Madden, have the game played, and take the stats from there and turn them into their fantasy points for your players, and that's it. You can have a fun game to watch. And you know that would be really fun to watch. It's all computer. Like, you're not touching it. You don't play it. And but it's just how do you set it? Like, how do you... Because you can play so many different ways of matter. You're doing six-minute quarters. You're doing full quarters. That's, you're doing up to, like, that's up to the people. 
That's who, fair though. Cause but then, like, but now you're now we're going back to the original issue where it's like if I'm down a lot, I'm like, of course we got to do 15 minute quarters. That's how long an NFL game is, you know. And it's if I'm winning, I'm right, like, but no. That, but but Madden like, games are only. I six. get what you're saying, but that's not even a reason. Like that, that's that's, that's where it comes to the commissioner being right. like, you've never played a 15 minute <laughs> right, quarter in your yeah, life. That in that might be extreme, but you get my point. Where it's yeah. like now. Now we're back to where people are just pitching ideas to help. Themselves. I do, and that that'll come down to like how chill your league is. Like, yeah. if, if you're in a league where the prizes are not insane, it's like a difference between like two hundred, three hundred dollars. I'd have no problem doing that because yeah. that'd be fun as hell. But I'd even think like if you want to do or like we're gonna split the prize, but like this will determine who actually gets the win for the week and gets the belt or the ring or whatever you have It'd in your league trophy. You know? Yeah, yeah, I think that's awesome. Like if you're content creators like us, like we could that would be awesome content for us like if this happened like e-town mm-hmm. like we had a big actually i don't even know what's going on with e-town i think steve is up by like 70 points oh, okay. I, don't, I don't think it's close i haven't really he just asked in the group chat and i was like well f- i'll figure it out when we yeah. figure it out another yeah. thing i saw people going by projections like just take whatever the projections were and then that's yeah. it that feels Which lame to it, me it, it does but i mean there's See, really not a lot of options again you're going back to like like why projections why not who had the best record in the regular season who scored the most points in the right like why we're just, I think you just got to call it. That's like the first thing. Cause same thing with like projections is like kind of objective in a sense. Like I, I get where you're coming from, but like, uh, projections makes a little bit of sense. Yeah. And it's also something where it's like, it's the closest thing to that game. Like you're talking about like regular season points. Who gives a fuck anymore? It's the championship. I want to know like what my team right here. But like right who now. gives a fuck about projections? That's those are just projections. A lot of people do. I feel I like, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just a shitty spot regardless. I, I, I don't know. I, I, at the end of the day, I think, like, getting on the phone call with the two people and figuring out what they're both cool with is probably the best way. If if it's like if it looks like it's objectively a close game still. If you're the commissioner, just say you won. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm yeah. taking the pot. I know all of you play fantasy football. You probably had some type of a situation. I want to know what you guys did. How did you handle this in your league? Like, let us know because, I mean, we're trying to deal with it right now, so maybe something that you did could help us, so that'd be cool. Love that. All right. Uh, prize picks squares. If you're not on prize picks yet, we're going to be doing an entire playoff preview series where we're making videos for every single game throughout the playoffs. And we're going to talk about them. We're going to go through, you know, injury reports, weather reports, all that kind of stuff, breaking down every single game, our predictions. We're going to be doing a lot of prize pick squares. So if you're not on there yet following us, make sure you go download the prize picks app. It'll be one of the first links in the description. Use code BDGE when you do so, and they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match. Throw 10, you'll have 20. You throw 20, you'll have 40. You throw 50, you'll have 100 up to 100 Dollars. What's good? Ike just texted me. He goes, uh, lunch is ordered. <laughs> <laughs> Food is here. Sexy made someone concede because of projections, even though they were winning at the time. <laughs> <laughs> what, See, what? that's the shit I can't do. Like, there's no. no way. Unless we came to a decision. Sorry to go back on this again. Like, as a commissioner... I can't make a decision where one side feels like it's unfair. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like you have to talk to both the people involved, make sure they agree with what you're about to do. And right. Then, I don't yeah. want, that's not like a decision as a dictator. I want, I, I feel want like it's tough to make the decision knowing like the outcome right now, like being like, all right, I'm going to make this decision. I know that this person's going to win because of it. Right. You probably have some bias and shit. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. Um, all right. No bias when it comes to fucking prize picks line though. We only, we only knock these out of the goddamn park animal. You want to start for us? Hell yeah, I got a crack in the neck. Saturday by slate, by the way. There's two games Saturday, right? Two Card- Saturday games. Cardinals, 49ers. No. <laughs> Chiefs, Raiders, Chiefs, Titans, Raiders, Jags. Titans, Jags. Okay. Titans, yeah. Jags. Yeah, that's where I'm going to start, Titans, Jags. So if you Let's have Titans, Jag, you know. I got a few. Throw, in the, throw them in after. Um, all right, Titans, Jaguars. Big game. Big man, Derrick Henry. I'm taking uh, 14 and a half receiving yards. We're taking the more on this. Look, he has 32 receptions on the season. Derrick Henry. 32 receptions on the season. He's got two catches almost every single game. Uh, he's averaging 36 receiving yards through his last five games. He's basically good for two catches, like 30 yards almost every game this season. It's been pretty crazy to see from Derrick Henry. Uh, we used to say he can't catch. He proved us all wrong this season. And uh, I think in a big game like this, they're not going to change anything. Josh Dobbs can't throw the ball that far. Yeah, dump off City. Dump I'm, off city for sure. Bro, I mean, like, Derrick Henry against the Jags is just a, a, a tale as old as time. So I'm going to take the rushing over, and mm-hmm. I feel like everybody's going to be so in on this that that makes me a little bit nervous. It's at 91 and a half, but you look at the last three games versus the Jags, 121 and 1, 133, 215, 2, only on the ground. So with Henry, I mean, Dobbs is in there. Henry, December, January against the Jaguars, I, I've never seen something I'm – as comfortable with as, as something like that. So Derrick Henry, triple digit rushing yards. I feel like w- what else can happen there? Yeah. I don't even think the under is possible. This, this seems like a big Mike Vrabel spot dogs for the division. 
And it also seems like a classic Jaguars choke job. So, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, just from a betting perspective, six is kind of enticing. Haven't played it. But like you said, did take the over. I took the Jags total over of 23 and a half because I just, I just think there's going to be lots of points on the board, yet not really confident to take any squares here. You got any more from that game? You got no squares? I got no squares in this game. I mean, you shitting me? I got fucking like 17 for this game. I mean, there's, there's honestly, like, we're recording this on Thursday. There's not a whole lot of squares yeah, out. There's not a lot up, but of the ones up, here we go. Christian Kirk, 51 and a half receiving yards. I'm taking the more. He needs 91 receiving yards to hit a $500,000 bonus. Not to mention, this is a must win game. So there's incentive for the money, and there's incentive for, like, hey, we need to win this game to get into the fucking playoffs. So they're going to throw it to one of their best wide receivers, and that's Christian Kirk. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I, you could throw out any Jags pass catcher, like Zay Jones. He doesn't have a line yet, but Evan Ingram, 45. Like, I like all of them. I just don't know which one to take yeah. right now. Titans are also uh, one of the worst teams against wide receivers, which we already know. They're, yeah, their pass D is so bad. They give up the third most yards to wide receivers this season, over 3,000 receiving yards. The ne- right below them, the Panthers are at four with 2,800. So you could see the gap right there between the three and the four. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just one of those ones where – I expect him to get peppered with targets. Yeah. I, on the flip side, because we need someone to run it back with from the yeah, Titans we, we need a little Traylon Burke run bike. You know what I mean? He's at 36 and a half, which I feel like is low. We just saw the connection last week a little bit with Dobbs. Eight targets, four catches, 66 yards. Also got involved. He's been getting involved on the ground, which is kind of interesting. But, like, I, I feel over the second half of the year, anytime Traylon Burks has really been, like, on the field and part of the game plan, he's produced. Yeah, he's so, been solid. Yeah, so I, I feel like 36 and a half is one big play or just, like, a couple targets thrown his way. Uh, 36 and a half just feels a little bit too low for someone that I feel like is super talented. Yeah, I mean, my only concern is that I like everybody's line, and not everyone's hitting their more this game. Well, so for sure. I, I gotta, I'm got. i waiting, and I'm thinking about it a little more before I start attacking it, because right now I would just pepper all the mores of the Jags. And yeah, I got one Titans. more from this game. One I got, more? I got one more. One more more. Trevor Lawrence, more than 250 and a half passing yards. Going right back to it, the Titans switched give up. Switched up on the rushing yards? Yeah, I switched it up. Mm-hmm. Titans give up the most. That's the with a... Or the with the capital T H E. Not a most. The with <laughs> the most. <laughs> the like number one passing yards in the league. Two quarterbacks. Obviously, those are the guys that throw the ball. Trevor Lawrence must win game. He's done. He, I mean, he's crushed this line many, many times this year. Uh, second half of the season, he's been pretty excellent. So, uh, I'm, I'm sticking with Trevor. I, I did have like Nick said. I, I had the 14 and a half of the rushing yards there, just because this is a must win game. Probably gonna be playing with a lot of heart, no regard for his body. Just right, trying there to won't get be a win. any slides. There, will, all those little extra like three yard pickups are going to be important. I'm surprised yeah, you pivoted away from shoulder that. for sure. You know what? The Titans, they're a very good team against the run, and that includes against the quarterback. So that's why I just I stayed away from it. But in a game like this, it, yeah, I typically don't care about that. Like it, it's a must win game. He's going to do whatever he has to to get extra, every extra yard. So yeah, and Tony had no squares in that game, so he didn't care about the game whatsoever. <laughs> but let's let's move into uh, some of the other games on the slate. Some of their games that. Uh, we can attack right now because there's squares up from, from most of the games, but there will still be plenty added over the next couple of days. I'll just rip off one of my top guys that um, that we have already talked about, so I won't go into depth, but Jared Sidham at 225 and a half passing yards versus the Chiefs. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a believer in Sidham. I liked what I saw, and again, like the Chiefs are just going to throw up points against this Raiders defense where they're going to have to attack on the on the other side of things. So 225, uh, I feel like uh, is, is a really solid line. I mean, he threw up like 360 or whatever last week. It was, you know, so he had some extra time there, but regardless, I think that's enough to get it done for um, him against the Chiefs. Yeah, and on that line, uh, I really like Devontae Adams, over 70 half receiving yards. Chiefs are terrible against the wide receiver. Last week, he threw up 150 against the 49ers. So those are two squares that I have correlated together. The more passing yards of Stidham, more receiving yards of Adams. And then uh, I actually ran it back with more rushing yards of Pacheco. I like that one. I, I saw you had it, and I was like, I need a chief, so I'm going to throw it in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Pacheco. He's basically, like, what was the line, 56 and a half? 56 and a half. Yeah, 56 and a half. Like, last week he got his lowest amount of, like, carries in the past, like, five weeks. I expect them to kind of, like, yeah, Mahomes is going to throw the ball, but this isn't a must-win game. This is a game where they're just going to probably... I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders keep this close. I, I think it's a must-win. They just might do it with ease. Yeah. Well, I don't know about with ease. I think they're gonna. it's going to be ugly with ease. That's how the Chiefs like to... Ease. Yeah. That's yeah. how the Chiefs like to do it. They're, it's going to be with ease, but the scoreboard is going to be like they won by four. Yeah, exactly. Nailed it. Raiders plus nine and a half. Lock it in. <laughs> Love that one. All right. We got any more squares for that game? Chiefs, I Raiders. do not have any for that game. All right, those are the only three that I have for it. Let's let's go to Pittsburgh, 
Cleveland because I think that's a pretty interesting game. Pittsburgh needs a win to advance to playoffs. Uh, does anybody know their situation? Because I think they rely Bills on need to win and the Jets need to win. Okay, so I it's kind of a long shot. Jersey Jerry on the train yesterday, and I was talking to him about it. Really? Yeah, look, when, right after I left the office, he was on the train with me. I was talking to him about it. All right, good for Jersey Jerry. But <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Pickett less than 92 and a half passing yards in the first half. Um, I think the Steelers are going to be playing a little tight. They need to win against the Cleveland Browns, who have a bad run defense. I think the Steelers try to keep this on the ground, try to keep control of this game. Kenny Pickett in his last two games in the first half, 42 pass yards, 65 pass yards against uh, Baltimore and Vegas. I like that a lot. I, yeah, I think they're, they're like a run first him. nature. So right. it feels like they're, you know, he's never going to be statistically going out of his way in the first half. Yeah. So. Plus, Najee's line is at like 72 and a half. So they, you could see it with that high line. They're expecting them to probably run the ball a lot. Jalen Warren's been getting some carries. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, the run game is probably what they're going to lean on. So I like it. Talking about the run game, we both have Cam Akers, 68 and a half, more rushing yards. The dude's just been like lights out the last few games. Can he uh, do it again? Dude, he's looked great, man. I, I don't really have a lot of hesitation on where he is anymore, like with health or anything like that. Playing against Seattle, which is a team you could for sure run on. I mm -hmm. um, feel like they're going to continue to sink carries into his fucking stomach. 23 carries last week, or 23 carries two weeks ago, 19 carries last week. Um, and, and kind of the beautiful part about that is you look at the two different games, they beat Denver 51-14, 23 carries. They lose to LA 31-10, 19 carries. So it was like it didn't matter – what the score was, it didn't matter what the game script was. It was just get the ball in Cam Akers' stomach and let him do his thing. So 68 and a half uh, feels like really, really good. It seems like the narrative against the Rams is that they're not going to be trying this game or something because the total is all the way down at 41 and a half. Seahawks are a six and a half point favorite. I think the Rams come out here and definitely try to play spoiler. So I think I, they definitely try, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, we also saw like them Baker's play. Baker's playing for his right, like future. Ba Baker's playing for his future. We saw them match up not that long ago where the Rams were at home. They were, I want to say, like seven-point dogs, two at that point. And then they, they almost won that game. Yeah, the problem is with the Rams without Cooper Cup, they have no weapons. Like Cam Akers is a running back. He's good, sure. But, like, you can't rely on Van Jefferson, Ben Skoranek, and fucking, like, Brandon Powell to win you games. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the guys they were rolling out last time. And they, you know, they were very competitive in that game. It was... Uh, okay, I, you're talking I, about Rams versus Seahawks? The first time they played. Um, it wasn't was that it? long ago. 23-27 Rams. 27-23 Rams. Rams ended up winning that 27 game. 27-23 Seahawks, okay. sorry. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that was John Walford was starting, though, for the Rams. Honestly, um, I think Baker, we can all say, is an upgrade, too. Probably, yeah. Anyone's an upgrade for fucking the Walfinator. Yeah. For sure. So, Aker's been killing it. I think this is another spot where he can just continue the run he's on. I, I see no reason why he would slow down or the Rams not trying this game, even though they don't really have anything to play for. All right, well, on the other side of that, there's a team that does have something to play for, and that's the Seahawks. And there's a player on that team named DK Metcalf, 65 and a half receiving yards. I'm going with the more. He went, like you said, they played this team already. He went eight for 127 the last time they played the Rams. And uh, the Rams give up the seventh most receiving yards in the NFL to wide receivers. So this is one of those things, like I said, I'm going back to the, the, the must-win narratives. Like, Seahawks got to win this game. The only thing that's tough is I believe they will find out whether or not they're playing for nothing before they actually play. The Seahawks? Yes. No, they play before. Oh, they play before. They play before. The okay. Lions will know. Lions are the one. Okay. Lions so never mind. Yeah. Scratch that. DK Metcalf, more than 65 and a half receiving yards. Uh, Tyler Lock is still a little banged up. I'm not really sure if he's 100% healthy, but I'm not going to rely. Yeah. There's a chance that he doesn't play, but. Exactly. So DK is going to be the number one wide receiver there. He's the primary guy. He's going to get all the targets, going to get all the yards. And uh, 65 and a half is pretty low when you're going to get 100 yards. So, yeah. How do you feel about Geno, 235 and a half? You looked at that one at all? I did a little bit, yeah. I, um, I try to stay away from quarterbacks, honestly, for the most part, because they're really hard to predict for me. Although, Everything's kind of hard for me to predict. Yeah, <laughs> stick to kickers. Player props, yeah. <laughs> kickers. kickers are so simple. It just says 1.5. <laughs> you just go more or less on that. Crushed it on kickers last week. <laughs> there we go. A, two, uh, a two square kicker parlay. Yeah. Just more. Have you ever done less? No. Okay. Never. Never less. Never. <laughs> yeah. It will be uh, interesting to see the DK Metcalf Jalen Ramsey matchup again. Those two always got big beef. So I think uh, DK is always out to prove 
that he can throw up some numbers on them. He's you know? just going to body him like he does every time, I feel like. I want to go to Packers and Lions. That's right. So, as we mentioned, the Lions are going to know whether they have something to play for by the time that they kick off. I think Dan Campbell's going to have this team up and ready to play regardless. I don't think he's going to have them like look at their phones and be able to know. Well, they'll know. No, they won't Let's know. Let's be real. They'll they won't know. know. They won't know. I just don't. I think, think there's a chance they go with that route. Regardless, though, the, the Campbell's got him in a in a in a blender where they don't know what's actually happening around them. Yeah, yeah. They, so they work. Aaron Jones's total of rushing yards is sixty three and a half. I'm gonna go with the less. The Lions' run defense. I'm terrible at predicting when they're gonna be good, but for the most yeah, part, they just let they've been able to go for like a hundred. Yeah, they've been able to show up uh, in certain spots. Aaron Jones, rush yards, he, he crushed it against Minnesota. Minnesota's a terrible run defense, though. Against the better run defense, like Miami, they've been able to limit him. So, I don't know. I, I just feel like 63 is kind of a high number for Aaron Jones here. All right. Uh, I have another player for that game. I've got Alan Lazard, uh, 49 and a half receiving yards. I'm taking the more. He kind of lives in this area of, like, 5 for 50. He's been there, like, all year. He went 4 for 87 versus the Lions when they played them earlier in the season. And then last week, uh, he went 5 for 59, then 5 for 61 the week before. He just kind of gets his five catches for 50 yards basically every week. 49 and a half receiving yards is the line. So I'm kind of just going with the averages here. And it's also one of those things where must-win game. Um, it, it could be a shootout. It could be a tight game. I don't know how this game is going to be played out, but I expect Alan Lazard to do what he basically does every single week. Animals' law of averages. That's Never it. fails. That's it, baby. I want to touch on Vikings Bears. So Justin Fields has been ruled out of this one. Yes. Kind of feels like the Bears are just waving the white flag here. You know, if this was more important game, I'm sure Justin Fields would just play through it. But he is going to be riding the bench, which means I'm going to take less than 78 and a half rushing yards of Dalvin Cook. You threw this comment out there, and I agree with you. Dalvin Cook just looks mid, mm-hmm. probably this whole year. But against Green Bay, whose run defense is atrocious, only 27 rushing yards, only 64 against the Giants. Back-to-back weeks where we would expect Dalvin Cook to have a good game kind of comes up flat. Now the Vikings don't have a whole lot to play for. They're going to try to win because if they win and the Niners lose, they'll technically have the two seed. They won't know the Niners' results when they're playing. So I'm sure that they're going to try to win, but they're probably going to be up early and often, not need to floor the gas pedal on this one. Probably a big Alexander Madison game. So, I and this is Dalvin Cook's one of his highest lines of the season. Yeah, highest know, lines in a long time. You do know that why that is, right? Because of the Bears' terrible defense. Yeah, the Bears give up like the second most yards to running backs. Yeah, I mean it's just it, it's probably just like a game script thing, where yeah. it's like they expect them to kill him because Fields not playing. Bears defense is there and. Just yeah, I, I just think Madison's going to be really involved in this. It's it's not going to be like a Dalvin Cook show. This dude probably yeah. gets the rest for playoffs. Cook doesn't need to get more than 15 carries in this game. I don't even think he'll get 10. Yeah. You don't think he'll get 10? Uh, what's the point? If they're like, like it, it's not, I don't think that's like this the only Like, the only person that actually needs something in this game is Jefferson if he wants to break the record. And then other than that, they don't need the win. Like, the, I mean, yeah, they can use the win, and then they can maybe get the first seed of... Um, I feel like they don't give a fuck about Dalvin Cook. Like, if you look at over the last, really like, don't. four years... Anytime it's like Dalvin Cook shouldn't be playing or Dalvin Cook's hurt, he gets like 30 touches. Like, I don't know. Cook just feels like a, a a pinata at this point where it's like they don't – they just beat the shit out of him. Yeah, I'm worried he gets like a 50-yard fucking rush on this and then basically crushes your line. But and then sits down and <laughs> hits, hits the less. Yeah, maybe. Hey, these are the ones that I always – these are the ones that scare me the most on the uh, – I feel in, really in good about 17, this one. 18. I actually feel way better about this one than Aaron Jones. But anyways, you mentioned Justin Jefferson – 194 yards away from setting the record. So I'm going to take the more of 45 and a half receiving yards of Justin Jefferson in the first half. I think he's got to set the tone early. I, like, obviously, 200 yards is an amazing game. I don't think he does that in one half of football. So if he's not on pace to do it in the first half, I think they probably just sit him. That's why I'm not taking the full game, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. I like that. Yeah. It, it's kind of like you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning, mm-hmm. right? You can't break the record if you need 200 yards if you don't start in the first half. That's true. Right? That's a if, really good way to put it. Yeah, if he only has 40 receiving yards in the first half, are are they going to push him to get 160 in the second half? Probably not. Probably not. Especially in a game that they're probably going to be winning by a lot already. I like that. that. I, think they'll, I think they'll probably try to sh- fucking send it early on, maybe mm-hmm. get him involved in a couple screenplays if he could break away, and if they've got mojo, go for it. If not... Yeah. yeah, especially after last week, how he put up such a dud. You know he's not going to want to like just come in and be like, uh, 
Give me yeah. one catch for 20 yards and let me sit it out. Like, no, he, he really got bodied yeah. last week. Yeah. It's kind of embarrassing. It happens to the best of us. Us all, you know. Elite. You, Justin Jefferson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get bodied. Of the great minds. I get bodied by prize picks every week. He got, you know, he got sunned by uh, Jerry Alexander. Alexander, that's right. Yeah. Let's, then, uh, let's take it away with the f- with with our 49ers. Our 49ers. I'm a lifelong 49ers fan as of this square. Uh, welcome to the party. I have a couple squares. One of them. We're uh, overlapping here. But the one that I really like is George Kittle. More than 23 and a half receiving yards in the first half. Kittle has just been the safety blanket of Brock Purdy as of late. And with no Debo, he's been really involved against Debo's going to be back this week, no? Debo? Yeah. No. No? Not this week, no. I think he's ready to be back, but I don't know if he's going to play. I would expect Debo not to play this week. Debo Samuel... Is practicing in full for Week 18 against the Cardinals. Under normal circumstances, it would mean Samuel is guaranteed to start for the first time since Week 14. However, the 12 and 4 Niners are set to demolish the Cardinals. Yeah, okay. So yeah, he's not playing. Um, he's not. It says Niners wide receiver Debo Angle won't play Sunday unless he's 100 percent ready. And oh, okay. then, like, well, he's practicing in full. I saw that yeah. report and assumed he was playing, but yeah, I guess he's out again. Yeah. So fuck I, me. I mean, maybe he's out there, but I I just feel like that would be a bad decision against the Arizona. Yeah, there's, David no, need, there's no need to risk him if he's not 100%. Yeah, but Niners do want to win this game to lock up the two seed. So I think they come out swinging in the first half. They probably get up early quickly, probably take the foot off the gas second half. That's how I'm predicting this game script to go. So I think Kittle is going to be George Kittle, at least in the first half. 23 is a pretty low line. And um, Cardinals, as we know, Terrible against tight ends. I think that's the biggest thing here is how bad the Cardinals are. We fucking are. all know that. We know. Oh, we all know. about that Cardinals. Like that's like shitty tight end. The one defense. stat that every single person collectively in fantasy knows. Yes. Play you tight don't even ends need to watch football Everyone's trying or to play figure fantasy. out what to do with their tight ends. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah. I guess I got to start the ones against, against Cardinals. the Cardinals. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and on the ground game, it's like this should be a game that they should control. And C Max Square over last week was one that I really liked and we hit on. It was even higher. It was like 78 and a half or something. This week's at 65 and a half or 60. Wait, what is that? 65 and a half. Yeah. For the full game. Yeah. So that's 65 and a half. I like that. You suggested the first half, which I think makes a lot of sense too, in case they end up like uh, blowing them out, sitting, sitting some of their guys in the second half. I think he'll probably hit both of these squares regardless. Um, but he'll probably hit the full game in the first half. There you go. Fucking nails both of them. I like, I like C-Mac over 65 and a half rushing yards. This is a game that they want to win. I mean, you rely on your most dependable player and C-Mac's been just a monster for them. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't want to see C-Mac, though, in the second half if we're up, like, more than 14. Yeah, there's no need. No need at all. Big Jordan Mason game. I can mm, see that, too. Lines. I was looking to see if there's any lines from there weren't. Not yet. Nah, you got to go to your local bookie for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. All right, those are all the lines, right? Yeah, I believe that's it. All right, well, uh, exciting weekend of football despite fantasy football being done. But like we said, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will be doing a huge playoff preview series throughout all of January leading up to the Super Bowl. Price pick squares, predictions, all that good shit. If you have any suggestions for the type of content that you want to see over the next month or so included in that playoff series, let us know down below. Hit the button that looks like this, and we shall see y'all next Friday.